go along with the new Z77 chipset, Asus has included an upgrade to the AI Suite, which is now AI Suite 2. Uh, fundamentally, it's going to be the same as the original AI Suite, but it's going to add many features to take advantage uh, of the features of AI, uh, the Z77 chipset. Taking a look, as with the old AI Suite, it opens up in a bar mode. Very simple to navigate. Uh, first button you're going to find is an auto-tuning button. Simple, one-click overclock. Next, move over to the tools. First tool we're going to see is Turbo V Evo. Hasn't changed all that much. Manual mode, allow for adjustments of B-clock frequency, CPU voltage, DDR voltage, with saveable profiles. Uh, after you've made some changes, you can go right in and save a profile to your hard drive, which can be called up later. Advanced mode gives you further voltage controls, auto tuning, one click tuning for a fast overclock or an extreme overclock, and finally CPU ratio, one core. Each core can be adjusted individually or you can lock all four cores and adjust all four simultaneously. Of course, you can always go back to OS default settings, apply them, and you're right back to where you started, so you don't have too many worries about making mistakes. Next, DigiPlus power control. Uh, we've seen the DigiPlus power controls before in AI Suite 2, but it's laid out a little differently. You've got three menus now rather than one. First menu, Smart DigiPlus setting, one button overclocking, or default, or the Smart Digi key, which is going to quickly deliver higher VRM frequencies and uh, is going to match it a bit to your overclock. Smart CPU level up, or I should say smart CPU uh, power level, is going to allow you to throttle down the power of your CPU, and the CPU will actually underclock to match your power settings. This is going to be good in a managed environment, of course, allowing you to uh, limit the amount of power you are using. Going back, very familiar, CPU load line calibration, current capability, voltage frequency, phase control, thermal power control, and power response control. All of your CPU v, uh, VRM controls in one place. Since ASUS has added some DRAM capability, uh, current capabilities, they are all on a separate sheet specifically for your DRAM. Moving on, EPU allows for uh, instant tuning, auto, high performance, or power saving uh, entirely as energy savings. Um, this is not going to do a lot to affect an overclock or whatnot. This is really uh, an energy, a green type of control. Fan Expert 2. Fan Expert's been totally revamped. You see the silent standard and turbo as well as full speed modes for your fans, but now there is also fan auto tuning. For each uh, of your fans, it will physically go in, take each of your fans, take them from full speed all the way down to nothing. It's going to be able to actually record the physical limits of your specific fan. Uh, that's going to be a big change from the guesswork that was previously used in any of the uh, auto tuning fan features that have been used not only by ASUS, but just about everybody else. You're also going to be able to adjust your fans individually, which previously it was an all or nothing type deal. You could adjust the CPU fan individually as well as the chassis fans individually, but previously it was uh, just silent turbo or full speed. There was no, or I should say silent standard turbo full speed, there was no um, individual fan tuning whatsoever. But now as you can see, hitting the test mode, it's bringing you it through the tests of each individual fan. As I say, it takes them from full speed all the way down to absolutely nothing and records the actual percentage of the speed where this uh, fan will actually start as far as voltage and where it becomes full speed as far as voltage and can adjust accordingly. So you're going to get much more precise fan control using uh, Fan Expert 2. Almost through the test, 
and as you're going through it's going to show you some of the features as you can see Fan Expert 2 you'll be allowed to pick individual fans and graph them accordingly I, as you'll see it doesn't actually look like this with all the fans on one graph you're going to get an individual graph for each fan like I say control very precise uh, going to really allow you to get the capabilities of your fans to the best that they're going to be and we're almost done here up at 93 percent and we finished we we'll go to next now interesting point here you can see CPU fan fan position CPU chassis fan 1 fan position is unknown you can actually search for the fan if you're not sure which header you're plugged into searching for the fan the selected fan will operate at full speed and others are stopped or slowed down so starting the search you're going to have one fan head up to full speed the rest are going to stop so you can physically see which fan this is stopping this I now know fan position that this happens to be the top fan You'll now see this listed as the top fan. Fan name position 2. That is going to be my back fan. And 4 happens to be my front intake fan. Go to OK. Now we can go over to the graphs. And you'll see got the CPU fan, chassis fan 1, chassis fan 2. Chassis Fan 3 is not connected, and Chassis Fan 4 have all got individual graphs which can be changed to your liking. That's going to allow you to get the most from your fans as well as keep your case cool and quiet at the same time. You can also go into an RPM fix mode, which is going to fix the RPM of any of the fans. But more than likely, you're going to want to just tweak out your fans the way you like them as well as this is going to give you the capability um, if your hard disk drives are running a little too hot you can speed up the front intake fan a bit while not having to speed up the rear exhaust fans. Uh, fan Expert 2 is really just a fantastic addition and you can see going through the chassis fans it's going to give you fan power. It's not going to start until the 20 percent mark at 400 rpm and it's able to go all the way up to 1275 at 100 with the speeds listed out accordingly at each of the intervals. And of course going back to the home mode you still have the silent, standard, turbo, or full speed to choose from. Set it up to standard, good to go. All your sensors on the side, I'm going to show you your CPU fan, CPU uh, fan opt, chassis fan 1, chassis fan 2, so on so forth. So you're going to get a good idea, well actually you're going to get an exact idea of which fan is running and how fast it is running. Moving on, Probe 2 allows you for alerts to any voltage, temperature, fan speed, um, anomalies that occur. So for example if your 12 volt goes over 13.8 right now it would give you an alert but let's make that more realistic and bring it down to about 12.3 so now any voltages below we'll say for 11.6 and anything above 12.3 is going to bring up an alert so you know that you've got a problem sensor recorder can record voltages for you selectable temperatures fan speeds and also you'll have a history record as you can see simple line graph which happens to be movable so you can get into any part and point you like you can zoom in and get a real accurate look at what's been going on going over to the history record you can choose your date record interval record duration and you can start recording so if you want to record the next six hours of what exactly is going on with your voltages start recording you'll get a six hour readout of your voltage uh, you, that you can search Wi-Fi Go interestingly uh, on the Wi-Fi equipped motherboards Asus has included Wi-Fi Go this is going to allow interaction between your tablet or smartphone and the PC itself you can use your PC as a media hub 
You can access remote desktop through your smartphone or your tablet. Use remote keyboard and mouse. Quick, easy one-click file transfers and smart motion control in equipped smartphones and tablets. Wi-Fi engine, selectable between client mode, where your Wi-Fi is simply going to just be a Wi-Fi receiver, or AP mode, which is going to turn your Wi-Fi into a digital hotspot for the rest of the devices that you're going to be using near it. <clears throat> AI charger is going to give you three times speed, for BC 1.1 enabled devices. Enabling it, obviously, plugging into a USB 3.0 is going to give you three times the speed in charging due to higher current. USB charger is going to allow for Asus, Apple, Kindle, and some other devices to be charged while the system is sleeping, as well as uh, allow you to just plug in and not have to go through the gyrations of telling your device that it's only charging and it's not trying to connect in any other way. USB 3.0 Boost, very simply laid out, um, uses the new UASP uh, protocol and also a turbo mode. UASP is available in devices that have it. Uh, simply select your device that is plugged in and click over to the turbo mode it will remount the device in turbo mode or UASP if um, it is available. Simple to use but a very very powerful device. Uh, it actually up speeds of USB 3 devices up to 170 percent. Finally, network eye control. Uh, very similar to what was offered in the old Thunderbolts in that you can actually take running applications or any of your applications, set them up in network eye control, give them priority, low, normal, or high for bandwidth. You can also schedule them. Uh, for example, if you only want AI suite running to be allowed to access the internet between midnight and 8 p.m., you can then schedule it and that is the only time it will be allowed to access the internet and it will do it at a normal low or high um, priority depending on your preference. Moving over under monitor you've got ASUS sensors, all your voltages, fan speeds, CPU frequency, ACES update. So, uh, I haven't seen anything offered like this on any other motherboard. Network eye control and the really cool Wi-Fi Go allowing you to interface your tablet or smartphone with your computer.